for our first drawer, we're going to use this project as an example. We're going to fit a lock rabbit drawer into this opening. The first step I need to do is determine how wide the drawer is going to be. So what I've done is with these epoxy coated slides, I've used double face tape to secure them to the side of the cabinet. And now I can measure how wide the drawer is actually going to be. In this case, we're about 10 and a 16th. Then I need to count for the depth of the drawer. So I measure the depth, and I'm measuring 13 and a quarter inches to the face frame. We're going to be applying an overlaid drawer face, where the drawer face totally sits in front of the face frame. So 13 and a half inches, we're going to take a quarter of an inch away from that to account for a little bit of room at the back of the cabinet. So our drawer box is going to be 13 and a quarter inches deep. Now for the height of the drawer, I typically like to allow a quarter inch under the drawer and three quarter inch above the drawer when I'm using drawer glides. It's just a nice rule of thumb to go by because you're able to just make the drawer one inch smaller than the opening. So in this case, we'll make four inch tall drawer. So I've prepared some half inch material, four inches in width, and we'll start making the dado cuts for creating that lock rabbit joint. We have our fence set up so the distance from the outside edge of our tooth to the fence is the same thickness of, as our stock. That will allow us to cut one half of the joint. As we're going through the next steps, we'll be fine-tuning that fit. So now let's make one more test cut. And that fits pretty good. We're satisfied with that cut. What I'll need to do is move my miter gauge extension back. I'm going to add a one quarter inch thick face to the rip fence. I'll stick it on with double face tape. This makes a perfect length rabbit cut. Now we're not quite there. We need to raise the blade to get that to fit. I'm going to make us one more little height adjustment and then I'll also need to recut this joint. Because I've changed the height of the blade, that will create, that will move this, make this cut deeper and everything will come together. So I'll make one more adjustment. And we're there. Set our fence out of the way. Move back over. And we're recutting the same joint, so I'm comfortable with not cutting a new end. And that should come together just like we want it. Now we need to cut our parts to length. We know our overall dimension of the front of the drawer will be 10 and a 16th, but when you have a joint on both ends, you'll need to remove the width of one of the drawer sides. So 10 and a 16th was our drawer width minus about a half inch. We're going to be 10 and 9 sixteenths for our drawer front. So if we remember, we were 11 inch, we had 11 inch wide opening. We lost almost an inch with the hardware. And then we also lose a half inch so by rule of thumb, I like to remove an inch and a half from the drawer front for its, to determine its final length. Now, the joint that we're going to use at the back is sim simply going to be a dado joint. So our front is the lock rabbit, and the back is the dado. The, these two parts will be the same length and our drawer sides will be the same length. So I'm going to cut them both at the same time. I'm going to use the miter saw, or I could use a miter gauge extension and a stop block, but I don't want to change this setup. So I'm going to go to the miter saw, cut our boards to length, and we'll be ready to make our first uh, cuts. Now that we've got the lock rabbit to create the front and the sides of the drawer, 
while we're still set up with our quarter inch dado blade, we can cut the groove for the bottom. Pull the auxiliary or your sacrificial fence away. And this is when it's probably a good idea to start marking your parts. I'll want to cut down here and down here for the bottom of my drawer. So this cut is just a rip cut on the sides. Now for the front, we've cut our rabbit on the bottom, but we need the groove on that inside face. So we'll make that cut. With our grooves cut in the front and the sides, we now have a place for the bottom. One more thing we have to do before we put the bottom in is we have to cut the dado for the back. So if you've got multiple drawers to cut, go ahead and make them all now. So we'll switch to a half inch dado blade or a dado blade that's the thickness of the drawer material to install the sides. Here I'm going to set the dado blade so that it's about one inch from the fence and make a test cut. That's going to fit real well. So now we'll take our sides and on the inside face of the drawer side We'll cut the dado at the back. So we've got the, here's where our front will attach. And now we're making our cut for the back. Now let's check our fit. I got a piece of sandpaper. If I need to, I can do a little sanding just to make sure everything's fitting up right. There we go. Nice fit. Now we need to cut the bottom. To do that, it will need to be the same length as the front and back, minus about a 32nd of an inch. And then to mark the length, you just simply flip it over. Now what I'll do is I'll sand the inside faces of the drawer, both sides of the back and the bottom to 180 grit before I start putting the assembly together. I like to just run a bead right down that front edge and the bottom of the dado. Install the back. Install the front. Apply glue up here. The reason I don't apply it in the dado is if I put the glue here, when I flip it over, I've got to worry about it running all over the place because I've got two joints that I've got to line up. Make sure everything's down tight. And apply your clamp pressure. If everything's been cut square, these should be equal dimension across the corners. So we're just over 17 and, or 16 and 5 eighths. And 16, just over 16 and 5 eighths. So we'll allow that glue to dry. So I've pulled the clamps off and it's ready for sanding on the outside. You can see with the clamp mark, any clamp marks will be removed now that 
there, so there was no real point in sanding the outside of the, cat, the drawer case. So I'll sand that up and we'll install the bottom. With the drawers assembled, I can install the drawer half of the slides. They simply screw to the bottom of the drawer, flush at the front. Now I need to put the drawer glide inside the case. In this example, the side is offset from the face frame. So I need to make some fillers. To do that, I was, this is a quarter inch. I'm just able to use some quarter inch plywood, but you'll want, you'd want to mill it to whatever thickness you need. And that can be just installed with double face tape. When we install the, the glide, we'll screw through the filler strip into the side of the cabinet and that will secure it permanently. And we'll line it flush with this rail. Now we can set the glide. I just set the glide right down on top of the rail and set it flush to the front. Now flip the, cam flip the cabinet back over and repeat this same process to install the glide on the other side. Now we've got the drawer glides installed in the cabinet and the, ma the matching parts on the drawer, we can install it. Nice flush front. Now we need to think, start thinking about the drawer face. We talked about we're going to do an overlay drawer face. If there is a door next to it or below it or above it, they need to line up. So the hinge configuration of your uh, door will actually impact the size of your drawer face. You can cut a lock rabbet on the router table too. This setup is similar to the table saw. Set the fence so the distance to the far side of the bit equals the drawer stock thickness. Then, route a dado across the side. Attach a one quarter inch thick fence behind the bit and rabbit the ends of the drawer fronts.